Hey guys, what's up? It's Ian Flynn here, and welcome to episode number 7 of my Warframe Beginner's Guide for 2019. After 4 months of giving the series no attention, it's finally back. In today's episode, we're going to be covering everything that we need to do to complete the Jupiter Junction on Ceres and more. The first step of completing the Jupiter Junction is completing the quest known as the Arcwing. You should have got access to this quest after completing the Mars Junction on Earth. To start this quest, go to your codex, then the quest tab, and select the quest. The Arcwing quest is a very straightforward quest. It consists of three different excavation missions where the excavators are guaranteed to give you a part blueprint for the Arcwing known as the Odinata. Once you completed all the excavation missions, you will be required to build all three parts. The harness, the wings, and the systems, so then you can build the Odinata Arcwing itself. After crafting the Unanata Arcwing, you will be required to play an Arcwing mission for the first time. Arcwing is not Warframe's best content in its current state. Most people have a love it or hate it relationship with it. It doesn't play a huge role in the overall progression in the game, so don't worry too much about it. I would recommend going back in the star chart and doing the Arcwing missions that you weren't able to previously do. This is to get a few levels into your Arcwing early, so that way when you do actually have to use it for small segments and other missions, you don't get obliterated. Arcwings and Arcwing weapons also give you mastery rank, so it's worth leveling them from level 0 to 30 as well for bonus mastery. Arcwings also have their own exclusive mods, so make sure to keep an eye out for them while playing around in Arcwing missions. You just need the basic mods like health, shields, damage, etc. for the star chart content. Moving on to the next junction requirement that you might find a little bit tedious, we have to defeat a prosecutor on Ceres. Now, a prosecutor looks like this. They will have a bright glow around them of a color which matches their element and will seem pretty tanky at first if you haven't modded your weapon properly. However, killing the enemy for most players is not the difficult part. The difficult part is actually finding one. I was able to get them to consistently spawn on the node Nuovo. This is a rescue mission. They normally spawn outside the large door that stops you from accessing the holding cells. If a prosecutor doesn't spawn for you, just run the mission again. Make sure to allow the alarm to trigger and for the enemies to run at you to make finding them a lot easier. If you're having trouble killing the prosecutors, run the weapon known as the Boltor with Serration, Speed Trigger and Elemental Mods equipped. Killing the prosecutors should be pretty easy then. Another juncture requirement is to survive for 10 minutes on the survival node known as Draco. Think of this kind of like a gear check to test your endurance. Remember that the longer you stay in a mission, the more difficult it's going to get, so get going to your modding station and upgrade your mods. For every one rank you put into the likes of Serration, put a rank into the other mods that you use to even things out. Kill as many enemies as possible when you're playing a survival mission to sustain your oxygen levels by picking up the small oxygen capsules that enemies are going to drop. The last thing that we have to do to be able to take on the Spectre on the Jupiter Junction is to kill Vor and Lich Krill on the node Exta. Vor and Lich Krill are two bosses that you fought before so the mechanics of this fight shouldn't come as a surprise. The only difference is that the bosses and the surrounding enemies will be higher level and that you're going to have to fight both bosses at the same time. When you defeat both the bosses and complete the mission, you're going to be rewarded with a blueprint of a part for the Warframe known as Frost. It's in your best interest to farm up the Neuroptics, Chassis and Systems so you can craft Frost as soon as possible. There is also the chance that you're going to get the parts for the weapon known as the Mitre or a blueprint for the pistols called the Twin Gremlins. Neither are necessary to craft instantly but are good for bonus Master XP. One issue you may run into before hitting the Jupiter Junction is the hijack game mode on the node Ludi. This mission requires you to stand under a power core that will drain your shields enabling it to move along the railing to the end of the mission. Throw on the mods Redirection and Fast Deflection on your Warframe and then Guardian on your Sentinel if you have them. They will make this mission so much easier as these mods are centered around increasing your maximum shields and quick shield regen. Now you might think that with all the junction requirements completed, you're ready to take on the Jupiter Junction's Sentinel, but you would be wrong. The Warframe on the Jupiter Junction is known as Valkyr, and she just so happens to have the highest beast armor of any Warframe in the game with a pretty large health pool too. So you're going to pretty much be tickling her unless you chose Excalibur as your starter. In that case, you can just use your second ability, Radio Blind, to stun her, and then use your fourth ability, Exalted Blade, to finish her off. 
But for all of us completionists out there who chose Volt as our starter, we're going to have to pick up Rhino. Rhino is an extremely easy to craft frame that is also very tanky and very powerful. All the resources needed to craft him are available to us at this point. You should have farmed all of his parts from the boss on Venus on the node Fusa. If you haven't done that, you should go do that before doing anything else. You need the blueprints for his systems, chassis, and neuroptics. Once you have all of the blueprints needed, we need to craft them just like we would craft anything else in the game. We have to go get the resources that we need. To find out where to get the resources that we need, you gotta go to your navigation, select one of the planets that are available to you, and then in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you should see a resource drone icon. Hover over this and it's gonna show you what resources that are dropped on every node on the planet that you selected. Farm up the resources to craft all of the Rhino parts and then craft Rhino. This is unfortunately going to take 4 days if you account for crafting all of the parts at the same time and then crafting Rhino by combining them. By this point, if you've been leveling up all the weapons that I told you to level up in previous episodes, you should have enough Master XP to progress on to Master Rank 4. We're going to want to do this as a weapon known as the Heck is locked behind Master Rank 4 and that weapon is pretty much going to carry us through the entire Star Chart. The Master Rank 4 test is extremely easy. All you have to do is run around an arena while not dying to the infested until the timer runs out. Pick up the Hex Shotgun Blueprint from the market, craft it, and then level it up to level 30. Wait for your Rhino Warframe to be done, and then do the same for it. Level it to level 30. To level up, I suggest doing either Spy Missions or Dark Sector Defense Missions. Every planet has a set of Dark Sector missions. These missions are against the infested and yield higher credits and XP bonuses at the end, so not only are they a good source of XP, they're also a pretty good source of credits and trust me, you're gonna need a lot. If you still need to farm up some of the other mods or items that I mentioned in previous episodes, do the spy missions, but if you need credits, then do the Dark Sector defense missions for 5 waves, extract, then rinse and repeat. Make sure to do the highest level Dark Sector defense that's available to you at that time. If you recall, in the previous episode, I talked about a feature known as Nightwave, and we're going to want to pay a lot of attention to the system and its challenges as it's the most reliable way to earn potatoes, Oricon reactors, and Oricon kilos, which we're definitely going to need. Log on as much as you can and do as many Nightwave challenges as you can. The more Nightwave challenges you do, the more Nightwave credits you're going to have and the more Oricon reactors and catalysts you're going to be able to purchase. It is an absolute necessity that you get your hands on as many potatoes as possible so we don't have to craft a ton of Forma to make our Warframes and weapons stronger. Once you've obtained an Oricon Reactor and an Oricon Catalyst, put a Catalyst on the Heck and a Reactor on your Rhino by going to their modding sections, pressing Actions and then pressing Install. These things will permanently double your modding capacity. You can do this at any time as the 2 times bonus will always scale with the level of your equipment, meaning that if your Rhino was level 2 when you put on the reactor, it's going to have 4 capacity, but when you level up to level 4, it's going to have 8 capacity. When modding your Rhino, you want to make yourself as tanky as possible. I recommend throwing on Vitality, Steel Fiber, and Redirection for your defenses, complemented by the likes of Intensify, Streamline, and Stretch to make your ability stronger. On your Heck, simply having Point Blank and Hell's Chamber equipped will do, but if you have any kind of elemental mods, make sure to throw them on as they will increase your overall damage. Now on the Killing Valkyr, you want to focus on using Rhino's second ability, Iron Skin. This ability will make you completely invulnerable for a period of time until Valkyr manages to shred through it, and then his third ability, Roar, which is going to buff up your overall damage. Pop Iron Skin at the beginning of the fight and soak up as much damage as possible. This is going to increase the effectiveness of the ability, then when you have enough energy to cast Roar, cast it and then keep on shooting at Valkyr's head until she dies. You also want to ensure that you have your Taxon equipped with as many mods as possible that you think are going to aid you in this fight. A good example of a helpful mod would be something like Guardian that's going to restore your shields like we mentioned previously in this video. Valkyr is a pretty tough spectre to take down, and so is Trinity to be completely honest with you. You can do the exact same thing versus Trinity as we're doing versus Valkyr if you're still struggling with her too. But anyway guys, that is going to be it for episode 7 of my Warframe Beginner's Guide for 2019. Thank you guys for checking out this episode. If you're wondering where the Beginner Guide Handbook is, I'm still working on it. I want to make it 
very, very flushed out and then put it in the description of every single beginner guide video before I continue making, you know, every single one of them because we're still on track for getting out 50 free episodes for the end of the year. I can definitely still do it. I just need to, you know, put out these videos a little bit faster, which I'm definitely going to be able to produce this content a little bit faster now, saying that we are getting into the, you know, I guess more self-explanatory parts of the game, I guess you could say. But uh, anyway, guys, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you guys for watching it. If you liked it, hit that like button below. If you disliked it, hit this like. If you want to subscribe for more Warframe content, go ahead and do that. And I will see you guys in the next video.